Ever wonder what all those connectors or ports are on the back of a projector? Epson projectors vary by model, but we will go through the most common to get you familiar with each. The obvious connector to get out of the way first is the power connector. You will need to connect the power cable to the projector and plug it into the wall outlet when you are ready to use the projector. The traditional ports or connectors are marked computer 1 and 2. These are where you would attach a VGA cable. It is the one that usually has a blue connector. Simply connect one end of this cable to your computer and the other end to the projector. There are two in case you have two computers or two users that need to present material or if the room has a dedicated computer connected and room for you to bring in your laptop. Once connected, you usually have to press a combination of keys to allow the computer screen to be passed through to the projector. On my computer, it happens to be Function F7. On other PCs, it varies by brand. On Apple computers, you would need to connect the VGA cable to a mini display port adapter. Then select System Preferences from the Apple menu, then select Displays. Next, click Detect Displays. Make sure the VGA display or color LCD dialog box is selected. Lastly, click Arrangement or Arrange to make sure Mirror Displays is selected. A much easier way to connect to an Epson projector is to connect via USB. Now, there are two ports marked USB on the back of some Epson projectors. One is the USB Type A port, which is rectangular, and the other is the USB Type B, which is square. To display using a computer and an Epson projector, connect the square end of a USB cable to the Type B port on the projector and the other end of the cable to the rectangular Type A port on your computer. The first time you connect the Epson projector to your computer with a USB cable, the projector will download a driver to your computer to allow it to receive and project the image. Follow the on-screen instructions to install the Epson USB display software and select Yes if it asks you about the firewall. Then you should be up and running. Next time, it is as simple as plug and project. Depending on the model of Epson projector, you may be able to send sound from your computer to your projector via the USB connection. See your owner's manual or the projector menu to select. The USB Type A connector on the back of your Epson projector provides freedom from your computer. What this means is you can project images from a digital camera, USB thumb drive, or a document camera like the Epson DC06. The images that are stored in the supported formats can be displayed and selected through the projector's menu. This enables you to show digital signage or slideshow presentations when you're on the road or anytime you don't want to carry your computer with you. You can connect up to four video devices and use the remote control or control panel to switch between them. So, besides the computer ports we discussed earlier, S-Video also allows you to connect the projector to another piece of AV equipment. You may need to select the Source button on your projector's remote or on the control panel on top of your projector to start projecting. Composite or RCA video connections produce lower quality images than some of the other video connections, but it is just fine for most applications. These are the cables you have most often seen with your audio video purchases in the past. This is the three-pronged cable that has the yellow, red, and white connectors. The yellow connector is for video, the white is for left audio, and the red is for right audio. Connect each end of the cable to the AV device, like your DVD player, and the other ends to the projector. Please select the Source button on your projector's remote control or on the projector's control panel if the image doesn't come up automatically. Then you're ready to go. A little note, if you are using your projector with a device other than a computer and the video quality is important to you, here is a list of the video connection quality on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. HDMI and DVI are the best with component in a close second followed by S-Video, then VGA, and Composite falling in last. If you are asking how to use Component, 
Well, you simply use an adapter that converts VGA to component and connect the VGA side to the projector's computer port and the component side to your AV device. HDMI and DVI are the digital connections that other AV devices can use. The Blu-ray players and other newer AV equipment often use HDMI. They are simply plug-and-play, like USB. Plug the HDMI cable into the projector and the other end into your AV device. It's very easy. The microphone input jack is used to take advantage of the internal speakers of the projector. This allows you to connect a microphone so that you can elevate your voice level and be heard by more of your audience without shouting at them. It definitely makes for a more pleasant experience for all. Want to show a presentation from your computer with sound? This can be anything from a video or presentation that has an audio track. Simply connect a mini jack cable like this to the audio in port. This will send the sound from your computer to the projector's speaker so that your whole audience can hear it as well as see the images. If you want to attach external speakers that may be louder than your projector's internal speaker, you can do that too. Simply connect them to the audio out connector on the back of the projector and rock the room. To have multiple screens or to see the presentation on a monitor facing you so you don't have to turn around to look at the screen as you present, simply connect another VGA cable to the monitor out connector on the back of your projector and to the back of a monitor. The RS-232C port is there for advanced users. Most people may never have the opportunity to use this since it is used to download firmware updates to the projector or to use it with a control system. Either way, you need to be familiar with RS-232C connections to use the port. If you are a novice, you can just ignore this one. The LAN connection, if applicable, is also for more advanced use. With this connection, you can connect to the network, which allows you to do several things, which vary by Epson projector model. It can allow you to present images over the network. It can enable remote teaching or reaching multiple audiences simultaneously. Networking allows you to monitor and control your projectors remotely, which can save money. For example, not having to walk to each room to turn off each projector at the end of every day. It can also enable message broadcasting, which is simply using your projector to post messages to multiple locations. For example, if there is a pep rally in the quad at lunch or a sale in the bookstore. It is an instant digital signage to all networked Epson projectors. Wireless connection, if applicable, is a great way to future-proof your projector purchase. Whether it comes with the USB wireless module, you purchase it separately, or you are connected through an access point to your wired network, this feature can give you freedom to walk around as you present. It is wonderful since it allows you to interact with your audience. To connect the USB wireless module, the port is usually behind a door or in a cut on the front side of the projector. Simply slip the module into the USB slot, close the door, and you are on your way to the software setup. I hope you now have a clearer understanding of the ports on the back of your Epson projector. This should help give you familiarity with the devices that can enable you to give productive and captivating presentations to any audience, as well as save some money. Epson understands. You asked, we delivered. Epson, exceed your vision.